We Move Together by Kelly Frisch, Anne McGuire, and Eduardo Trejos. Five pairs of legs appear against a bright orange background. On the far left, a golden retriever is seated on the ground wearing a working dog harness. Standing next to the dog is a woman with warm brown skin wearing a turquoise skirt and red high-heeled shoes that match her cane. At the center of the cover is a child with dark brown skin standing hand on hip wearing brightly colored bracelets, blue shorts, pink shirt, and blue sneakers with yellow laces. To the right is a white-skinned child standing with legs crossed wearing pink and purple striped pants and blue and white sneakers. On the far right, a child with golden brown skin is seated in a blue power wheelchair wearing a green shirt, yellow shorts, knee-high orange socks, and red and white sneakers. The title, We Move Together, appears in ornate white lettering at the bottom of the cover. All bodies are unique and essential. All bodies are whole. All bodies have strength and needs that must be met. We are powerful not despite the complexities of our bodies, but because of them. We move together with nobody left behind. This is disability justice. Quote by Aurora Lovings Morales and Patty Byrne. We move fast. A diverse group of kids and their calico cat make their way down a smooth path in a city park. Most of the kids are moving fast, biking, scooting, jogging, kicking a ball, and zooming along in a power wheelchair. One of the friends, a child using arm crutches, is moving more slowly and is waving to the kids ahead. We move slow. The friends have slowed down now and are enjoying different parts of the park. A few of the kids are resting on a soft, grassy hill. Two friends are looking closely at a branch they found. The other kids, together with their cat, discover a poster for a carnival. We move together! Inspired by the poster, the kids are now playing a new game. As they move together along a city sidewalk, they parade into an imaginative dream world. The brown brick wall behind them gradually turns into a blue and purple night sky, lit up with yellow stars. The cement pavement magically transforms into a red carpet, the cat becomes a ferocious tiger. One child grows wings. The blue power wheelchair becomes a golden chariot. One child is using their arm crutch to hold up a brilliant yellow banner, which reads, We Move Together. Sometimes we have to wait. Waiting can feel boring, frustrating, hard. Waiting can also feel exciting. Many different people are waiting on a red and white public bus that has pulled over to pick up some passengers. Some of the people on the bus look impatient. A man with a big beard is holding a crying baby. One person checks their watch. Another person is scrolling on their cell phone while another person sleeps. One kid is holding a jar with a caterpillar and looks excitedly out the bus window. Outside on the sidewalk, a man holding grocery bags filled with apples waits to board the bus alongside a child sitting in a blue power wheelchair and her grandmother, who uses a cane. As the bus ramp slowly comes down, the child and grandmother wave at the kid with the caterpillar on the bus. Across the street is a flower shop, and the cat is wandering down the sidewalk outside the store. Like butterflies, like love, we wait so we can spend time together. The new passengers have now boarded the bus and the others have made space so that the child with the blue power wheelchair and her grandmother can use the accessible seating area. The child using the wheelchair waves her arms excitedly at the sight of her friend's caterpillar and three yellow butterflies float magically overhead. The kid's excitement changes the mood on the bus. The person with the watch is now chatting with the person with the cell phone. Amused by the commotion, the baby smiles and shakes a rattle. Sometimes when we're together, we get stopped in our tracks. Like when all the fun and flavors of ice cream are just one step out of reach. The cat sits on the front stoop outside an ice cream shop, licking its paw. Inside the shop, someone is picking out their ice cream with the shop clerk. While outside, two people are seated on a bench enjoying their delicious ice cream. 
The single step at the shop entrance is a barrier for a woman using an electric scooter who wants to go inside for ice cream. She is joined by her family, two kids and their father, who also look disappointed and angry about this barrier. We notice when things are unfair, and it helps us get creative. We make plans. We solve problems. Together with friends and community members, the family from the ice cream shop is busy at work in a large yellow workroom. They're designing and building ramps that will make sure everyone can enjoy the ice cream shop and other public spaces in their community. The woman using the power scooter has a clipboard and is overseeing the work. A few kids gather around a man in a power wheelchair who's drawing out plans for the new ice cream shop ramp. Some people are cutting wood using saws, glue, and drills. Others are painting the ramp's bright colors. One kid is painting a picture on the wall. The cat lies on a red carpet with a child playing with a Rubik's Cube. We build something better. The ice cream shop now has a new community-built ramp that makes it possible for the mobility scooter user and her family to get ice cream. In fact, new ramps can be seen outside of many of the cafes and shops along the crowded city street. The street is filled with activity. Cyclists ride up and down the street in bike lanes. One kid is rolling down a ramp while another runs along the sidewalk. Parents push their baby in a stroller. Someone is delivering boxes using a trolley. A man using a white cane crosses the street at an intersection, and our friend the cat sneaks out of the fish store with a tasty treat. We work together, kids and dogs, bodies and machines, bees and flowers, fish in water. Relying on each other helps us get where we need to go. Four circles appear on a blue background, each containing a small scene. In a yellow circle, someone removes their guide dog's harness while the dog chews happily on a green shoe. In a green circle, an older woman and a younger man smile as they ride a purple tandem bicycle together. In an orange circle, bees move toward a pink flower. The final circle shows golden koi fish swimming in a pond. Sometimes we find ourselves in unfamiliar places. We wonder... We get curious. Inside an art gallery, there are paintings on the walls and a group of people sitting in a circle. In the circle, a teacher, a person with pink hair and a fluffy pink vest, is communicating to the group using sign language. One of the kids in the group is wearing a cochlear implant. Another is using a hearing aid. On the other side of the room, a family is looking at the art on the wall, which depicts sign language movements. One kid looks with curiosity at the teacher who's signing and the group of children in the circle. Another kid touches a purple sculpture. We might have more questions than answers. Our questions can help us learn to do things differently. Inside a public library, a group of friends, including the curious kid from the gallery, is spread out on a big blue carpet. They are learning about and practicing American Sign Language. Two of the friends are communicating using a tablet. Another friend is in the computer area watching an ASL video on the internet. The cat is outside the library, pawing at the window, wanting to join with the children. And discover new ways of understanding each other. Many people are moving around inside a busy grocery store. People are picking out their food and paying for their groceries at the cash register. The cat is riding in a shopping cart. One kid is even sneaking an apple. Two of the kids from the library are trying to reach a box of cereal on a high shelf. One of the kids notices the teacher from the art gallery walk by and signs help in ASL. For the things that connect us are also what nourish us. Like roots and tubes and straws and friends. People are gathered in a tree-lined park with a pond and a bench. At the center of the image is a large tree with wide branches that are sheltering a group of friends. The kid who uses a blue power wheelchair eats with a feeding tube and the support of her grandmother. A kid is drinking from a water bottle while leaning up against the tree, while another kid is drinking from a cup with a straw 
that's being held by their friend. In the background, a mother breastfeeds her baby. Some people are floating, swimming, splashing, and wading in the water, while others are playing and resting in the sand. The cat looks down from overhead, resting in the branches of the tree. And these things that connect us are often what challenge us. Sometimes we disagree about how to be together. Solving one problem can create another, and we don't always know how to make things better. A group of children are sitting and lying on the ground making signs about climate change on big pieces of paper. They're surrounded by paints, paintbrushes, markers, crutches, and a cat. Some of the signs say things like, disability justice is climate justice. And like the ocean, we rise. Other signs say things like, keep the sea plastic free and say no to straws. Three of the kids look upset. One has a sign that says, skip the straw, save the planet. And the other two are pointing to a sign that says, straws are access. Sometimes we need to take a break. Someone's arms, adorned with rainbow bangles, reach toward the tops of the trees. Their fingers dance in the air as the sun streams through the branches and lights up the blue sky. Even when we're by ourselves, we never move alone. Like feeling so close with someone who's far. Like learning from others who have come before. Their memories can ground us, soothe us, and move us. It's nighttime in a darkened hospital room. A child sits in their blue pajamas with their crutches on the floor beside them. The child is looking at photos and a poem called You Get Proud by Practicing. Soft light is shining through a window. Surrounding the child is a magical indigo sky filled with shimmering images of eight disabled ancestors. Many of the ancestors have crutches similar to the child. One ancestor kneels with their hand resting gently on the child's shoulder. Whether we're by ourselves or surrounded by many, our small m movements can turn into big movements. We celebrate. We make change. There is a big gathering of people in the city, and many of the people are visibly disabled. Some people are dancing with their wheelchairs and with their crutches. Some are blowing bubbles and playing drums. Two children are holding a banner that reads, We're in this together. A child using a walker and wearing a helmet has a blue sweatshirt that says, Black Lives Matter. Another child sits on the shoulders of an adult wearing a red shirt that says, Duff Gain, and holds up a cell phone to show the person on the phone the crowd around them. Another child with crutches holds a sign that says, Nothing about us without us, while a kid with sound counseling headphones holds up a sign that says, Access is love. A person wearing a t-shirt that says water is life raises his fist in the air. We move together. In a big park, it's fall. The sun is setting, lighting up the sky, and leaves fall from the three big trees. There are lots of people in the park, as well as a guide dog and a cat. There are young people wearing coats, harvesting vegetables from community gardens. The cat is happily rolling in the falling leaves. There are people scootering, biking, walking, and jogging down a path. Behind the path, there are people playing on a play structure. Some people are having a barbecue. Someone is flying a kite, and a couple is cuddling on a bench, drinking coffee. Ideas and illustrations, a closer look. Glossary section one, how we move. When we move together, everyone moves differently. Some people move on bikes or push scooters, other people use crutches, canes, or walkers. People also move using wheelchairs, which can be electronically powered or physically propelled, or mobility scooters. Some people have a ventilator attached to their wheelchair, which is a machine with a tube that helps them to breathe. These tools are called assistive devices because they make it easier for people to get around, to find their balance, or take a rest. We also move using buses, strollers, dogs, and even shopping carts. Glossary section two, ableism. Because everyone moves differently, it can be hard to find places where we can all be together. Some places weren't designed to welcome everyone, and that means sometimes some of us get left out. This is ableism. Ableism is a form of discrimination. 
it wrongly considers only some bodies, minds, and behaviors to be normal, worthy, and valuable. Ableism assumes that being able to run fast on two legs is better than zooming around in a wheelchair, using crutches, or moving slowly. Ableism assumes that a body that can sit still or quietly in a desk at school is better than a body that needs to squirm, wiggle, stim, and move around. The idea that some bodies, minds, and ways of moving are better than others often excludes disabled people and can lead to hurtful labels, like when people get called dumb, ugly, stupid, crazy, or lame. Ableism creates barriers for disabled people, making it hard to meet friends, learn at school, find a place to live, get a job, participate in community events, or even go out for ice cream. Disability justice activists like Patty Byrne, Leroy Moore, Eli Clare, and Mia Mingus remind us that ableism is connected to other forms of injustice like racism and gender inequality. Disabled people are valuable members of all of our communities. We must all work together to fight ableism and build a more just world for everyone. Glossary Section 3, Accessibility. Wheelchair user Luke Anderson noticed that he was being prevented from going into many of the stores, restaurants, and other buildings in his neighborhood because they had at least one step to get in and out. Luke worked together with other people in his community to start the Stopgap Community Ramp Project. Through Stopgap, disabled and non-disabled people come together to build portable wooden ramps that make our community spaces more welcoming and usable for more people. So far, this project has made over 2,000 brightly colored ramps worldwide. The Stopgap Ramp Project is an example of accessibility, one way of making sure all people can enter, move around in, and use the spaces we share. Another example of accessibility is curb cuts. These mini ramps built into the sidewalk make it easier for people using wheelchairs and walkers or people pushing strollers and delivery carts to get from the sidewalk to the road. Sometimes curb cuts have bumps on them. This is called tactile pavement, and it alerts blind or visually impaired people moving with white canes or guide dogs that they are about to leave the sidewalk and move onto the street. Accessibility is more than just physical changes to our buildings or environments. Making things accessible can also mean removing financial barriers, using unscented products, learning new ways of communicating, and making sure friends feel welcome and are included. Access is something we can practice and build every day. Activists at the Disability Visibility Project say that access is love, that making something accessible is a loving way of making sure we all belong. Glossary Section 4, Disability Arts and Culture. Disability art pushes us to think about disability in new ways and imagine new possibilities for moving together. Carmen Papalia is a blind and non-visual artist who uses a long white cane to help him move around. He created an art project where he uses his white cane to lead sighted people on walks with their eyes closed. When people follow Papalia and his cane, they learn unique, non-visual ways of moving together. Carmen is not the only disabled artist. There are so many that there's even an entire art gallery named Tangled in Toronto, Canada for disabled artists and their work. Some disabled artists dance using their wheelchairs or paint or write poetry. Others create sculptures. At Tangled, visitors can interact with the art using different senses. Sometimes you can even touch the art. Glossary Section 5 how we communicate. Moving together means learning about the many ways we communicate. Sometimes communication is about using words and voices. Sometimes communication means using nonverbal gestures, body language, and facial expressions. For example, people might communicate with their eyes, a wide smile, slouched shoulders by flapping their hands or raising a hand in the air. Sometimes communication can look like someone yelling, or crying, or putting their hands over their ears. Or sometimes people communicate by simply moving their body away from the group. 
Deaf people and others who have trouble hearing spoken words often talk using sign language. Non-speaking people may choose to use pictures, tablets, or computers to communicate. People also say what they need to say using placards, art, or music, or even clothing. In 2017, disability activist Annie Sagara put the words, the future is accessible, on a t-shirt to encourage people to think about disability and accessibility in their communities and everyday lives. There is no one best way to communicate, and there are lots of people, books, and websites that can help us learn a new language. When we discover new ways of communicating, we can experience our world differently. Some deaf people refer to their communication differences as deaf gain rather than hearing loss to celebrate how deaf ways of thinking and communicating open up meaningful ways of being together. Glossary section six. Moving together isn't always easy. It isn't always easy to move together because sometimes we have different ideas and needs. For example, plastic pollution is a big problem for our environment. Plastic water bottles, bags, and straws are being dumped into our oceans and seas. They are polluting our waterways and harming many different species like turtles and fish. One solution people have come up with is to ban plastic straws from being used in restaurants or stores. Banning straws solves one problem, but it creates another. While all of us depend on clean oceans and ecosystems, some people also depend on plastic tubes and straws to help them drink or eat liquid foods. For these people, plastic tubes and straws are access. It's what helps them live. The slogan, nothing about us without us, is a reminder that disabled people often have been left out of conversations about issues that are important to our lives. Disability activist Alice Wong says that our movements are stronger when we work together. Disability movements are deeply connected to other social justice movements. We need to listen and learn from each other's experiences and perspectives so we can come up with new and creative ideas for how to solve the problems we all face. Glossary Section 7, Disability Community. It can be hard to live in a world where your body or mind is not considered best. This led disabled writer Laura Hershey to write the poem, You Get Proud by Practicing. Reading words and hearing stories by disabled people both past and present, can connect us to rich disability histories, cultures, communities, and social movements. Finding a community of people with whom we can share our experiences and ideas can help us understand our own bodies and minds in new and powerful ways. We're in this together, moving together with other disabled people and our allies. We can imagine and work toward building a better world and future. Author bios. Kelly Fritch is a disabled writer, educator, and parent living in Ottawa with her mischievous cat Lulu. She is an assistant professor in the Department of Sociology and Anthropology at Carleton University and co-editor of Keywords for Radicals, the Contested Vocabulary of Late Capitalist Struggle, 2015, AK Press. Anne McGuire is an associate professor in the Program for Critical Studies in Equity and Solidarity at the University of Toronto, where she teaches courses in disability studies and disabled childhoods. She is the author of War on Autism on the Cultural Logic of Normative Violence, 2016, University of Michigan Press. Eduardo Trejos is a Costa Rican multidisciplinary artist, a lover of color, insatiable reader, and parent of two boys, he currently lives in Toronto, where he works as a graphic designer. A drawn portrait of the author-illustrator team appears on the page. On the far left, a white woman, Anne, stands. She has long brown hair, glasses, and a striped black and white t-shirt and black pants. To her right, a white woman, Kelly, sits in her mobility scooter. She has short brown hair and is wearing red glasses, a purple polka dotted top with black tights. On her lap sits Lulu, the calico cat from the book. To her right is a Latino man, Eduardo, with short black hair. He's wearing glasses, a green button up shirt, and jeans. Back cover. 
On an orange background, a child in a yellow t-shirt with a colorful neurodiversity symbol on it and blue shorts appears in the middle of a teal circle holding a sign that reads Access is Love. Below the child, the words, A Joyful Exploration of Disability Community and Culture and All the Different Ways We Move Together appear in white lettering. At the bottom of the back cover on the left is the AK Press logo. On the right is black and white barcode. Between the two, it reads, Activities, Image Descriptions, and Other Accessible Reading Resources available on our website, www.wemovetogether.ca.